this uh, series of tutorials is about uh, close-up and macro photography, but really there are several different types, and I think we should go over them so you can at least be aware of them or maybe even start to figure out what, what appeals to you. So there are different types of what we could call near photography. One type is what I call mini landscapes. Uh, when I go nearer than what we could call general landscape photography, I term small landscapes, mini landscapes, or natural dioramas. For me, this means I, I want to include more of the context or surrounding space to whatever my subject is, like a group of plants or a shady glen instead of just whatever uh, the flower or the critter that I'm shooting. You know, it's like a small group shot. So I'm always looking for context when I, when I am trying to do what, what I call a mini landscape. Then we have close-up. I'm really, what I really am is a close-up photographer. That means that uh, it's close-up is short of being full macro photography, which is one-to-one. -one. That means that image that you're shooting, the subject fills the sensor one-to-one. -one. Uh, so this makes most of what I do something broader than one-to-one -to -one -to -one photography. Now, close-up or macro, the, this distance somewhere near just under macro um, is pretty typical of many of my shots in particular in my if I'm photographing live crit critters um, maybe it's technically a macro shot but as mentioned elsewhere the words close up and macro are now pretty much used to mean the same thing which is just close whether the shot is less than or greater than one to one does not matter to me I mean, true macro is generally considered to mean any photo that is one-to-one -one reproduction ra ratio or greater. And one-to-one -one states that the image on the sensor is the same size as the live image. Um, so the macro, real macro photography is equal to that one-to-one -one or larger. Then it's a macro. However, to most people today, macro and close-up photography are, are the same thing. They don't know the difference. And we, but, but, you know, larger than macro size, we should be aware of that. And um, here's a photo of a digger bee that's definitely larger. It's life size or larger. And it was taken with a Nikon D3S and the Cosina Voigtlander 125 millimeter f2.5 APO Lanther lens. One of my favorites, maybe my all-around favorite macro lens, just because it's a real workhorse. Now, this was taken in the early morning light. As you can see, there are no blown-out areas where maybe a stray ray of uh, pure sunlight reaches the bee. So for me, this is the best time to photograph before the sun breaks through the clouds, or if it already has, then I move to some shady area. Now, there are other kinds of super macro stuff, like photo macroscopy, however you say that word. The word macro, as we said, generally defines this category because macro refers to anything greater than one-to-one. -one. However, for myself, I reserve this description for studio work that's done on a rail with macro lenses. Nothing moves and live things are usually dead. Um, then there's another uh, category called uh, photo microscopy. This cat category really refers to microscope level stuff. I mean, technical macro photography, one-to-one um, -one ratio or greater. So here's an example of the image of the head of a large yellow underwing moth. It was taken by Rick Littlefield, the author of Zerine Stacker, the focus, focus stacking software that um, I use and it's just the best. And he was using a lens with 3.5 times magnification, um, slightly cropped by about five millimeters wide. And it consisted of 59 frames or stacks or layers. Uh, and this was taken on an automated focusing rail. Um, so anyway, with photomacography, we're definitely in the studio, perhaps on an automated focusing rail as, as Rick used. Uh, or a microscope stage, or using a microscope at at least, or at least multiple lenses hooked one to another. 
Um, from my point of view, this is interesting, but it's a little more clinical or scientific than I'm interested in. Uh, you know, micro photography in general, as the word suggests, is ultra close up, uh, as in the use of a microscope or something close to it. And it's definitely studio stuff um, where the camera's lens is mounted on a very finely graduated focusing rail using studio lights and probably a dead critter. Everything has to be just right with no wind or movement of any kind. I do some of this kind of work and we will talk about it in a later video. This image was also taken by Rick Littlefield um, and is 40 times life size, slightly cropped, with 170 layers or frames and each of the layers was 0 0.001 millimeters. This definitely was taken with an automated focusing rail. And you know, we're into the realm of scientific research at this point. And uh, personally, it doesn't interest me. I, I need more context. I don't want to get that close. I like to be out in the woods um, and so on.